So they think that they can stop the North Koreans with this Russia, South, China, America, South South Koreans. (laughs) That's right. South Koreans, America. I don't know. I just want to start it bringing to show that we're not always talking about poop and dicks. No. Um, Or poopy dicks. Poop on dicks. Um, Yeah, that reminds me of Bridget's story. Uh, She shit on a guy once. Oh, shut up. (laughs) So, um, (laughs) no, uh, everybody's like, they need sanctions. North Korea needs sanctions and need to hold them accountable for their missiles that they keep launching. Mm Mm-hmm. And nothing's going to... They keep doing it, like, three times They're a like year. They're like a petulant teenager. They're going to yeah. do whatever they want. Exactly. So, it's retarded. But uh, I just uh, I just thought that was funny. I heard it on the news. And uh, I said, ooh, look at me. I'm smart. <laughs> so, we got an email. Uh-huh. It's a short one. Uh, hey, guys. I listened to a couple of your shows with my mother. I almost peed myself from laughing, but my mom did pee herself, so keep up the good work. Thanks, Andrea. It's a girl I work with. I was like, you should listen to the show. She listened to the first show they listened to was that anal sex one that I just put up, the mm-hmm. old oh, from yeah. Sir Jonah. And then, uh, and then they're listening to ours was the, la- the Golden Boys, and they were laughing gotcha. at that one. Um, she didn't say in the emails that her mom is suffering from... That's uh, yeah. Incontinence. Her mom's so had seventeen babies, and yeah, she sneezes and she pees wrong. Yeah. Um. So I get this note from a guy at work, and he complains about every little thing. Like he said, uh, complains that they work in like a industrial kind of business complex. Mm-hmm. So there's all kinds of parking places. When you work there at night, you can everybody's gone. Yeah. He has one spot that he really likes to park his little red Honda at. Mm-hmm. And he's like, the little guys keep parking in my fucking... <laughs> That's right. Uh, sing it, Joe. And um, they, you know that I hate that little red Corvette? I, I hate that, and I hate... That one I don't hate as much as Raspberry Beret. Like, and I don't know if it was a different color, if like I'd be okay. To me. But Raspberry Beret, little red Corvette. Yeah, a little change in tempo, yeah. I never understood the fascination with Prince. Really? I've only liked a couple songs. Yeah. I like some stuff. I but don't see him as this genius that everybody else talks him up to be. It's the same thing with uh, uh, YouTube. I have a garbage over here if you need uh, to drip into something. <laughs> Joe's <laughs> <laughs> dick <laughs> is dripping. Dick He's is got, uh, what's that drip disease dick? that you have where you, where you drip out of the dick? I forget. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the... Um, like you too. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, like I, it's like they're huge, and I don't get it. So this guy at works, and don't read ahead because uh, oh. Amberly and Plums make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the guy goes, they park in my spot, and I said, you know, to play devil's advocate, because he goes, I got five thousand other places they could park. I go to be devil's advocate, you have so five thousand other places you could park. He goes, yeah, but that's. My spot, How they would it just leave spot? it open. He just likes. He seriously wants the spot. them to leave that space open for him. Yeah, he goes. I just like that. Who is this guy? So some guy at work his that you name. work with. Yeah, he's a security guard. Yeah, he's uh, one of my workers. I'm his boss, and he's talking to me like he wants me to do shit. You should um, say, you know, if you get a spot, I should get a spot. Yeah. And oh, if trust I get me. A spot. I want that spot. Trust me. He uh, he wrote me a letter, all angry and whatnot. Uh-huh. But awesome. so he says, I want this spot. I said, okay. I said, well, you know. So just wait, is this park. a spot at your work? It's not at the office. It's at his job where he goes to relieve the next guy. It's a 24-7 oh, site. Place that he... So when he shows up okay. at 10 o'clock to relieve the other guy, what happens is he leaves this spot. Somebody's next to him that's working, you know, mm-hmm. from 6 to 3 then or 6 to 2. Then at 2 o'clock, somebody else pulls up, and where do they park? Next to that guy. So when he comes to work, they're in his spot, the 10 o'clock, you know, when he relieves the 2 to 10 game. Oh, my God. So he's like, they just, they could park anywhere. And then he goes, and then whenever they pull the uh, work car up, they park it like six spaces away, and I got to walk over to it. And I'm, you know, I'm not as young. You know, he's like 60-something. He's been security for uh-huh. 37 years. He's making 11 bucks an hour. It's like wow. if you were doing that well, you would be in a different, you yeah. know, You'd be in my position or something, yeah. you know. And um, so he says, uh, so he's, uh, he says that, 
he says also the guy he shows up like 15 minutes early and he goes and the guy takes forever he's in the car and i go they get paid till 10 it's not their fault that you show up early show up like five till then yeah and i go i'd like that you're showing up early but just wait for five minutes and he's like no he goes no no he goes i don't think so yeah but they just they take forever and and i go just you need to not worry about all this stuff that's making you angry just like Listen to the radio, do something like calm down, like everything's fine. But he gets real angry, like motherfucker, cock his fist back when he's talking to you about somebody that he's mad at. And you're like, really? Like, nice. And he said, uh, and he said, all he's like, and then the tablet, he doesn't know computers and phones. He doesn't text, he doesn't do anything. He's mm. like machete. And um, <laughs> so he says, so he goes, and then I get in, and the phone is at 42%. And the tablet is at 12%. And I said, again, to play devil's advocate, you don't know computers that well, but if I have 40-something percent on my tablet, that's pretty good. I can last quite a while. And I go in 12%. I go that little bit different, but I said, also, you're working all night in the vehicle for eight hours. Just plug it in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all the wires are on the floor, and I got to... So just bring plug in everything when you get there like and then the car's on empty the guy leaves a car like with no gas well you have a gas code and a gas card so just go get the gas yeah but it's he not my fault do anything. he should yeah he should do it and it's like i go well you need to um i said just all your stuff is like not major stuff so on a saturday two weeks ago or whatever he calls and he goes, and I had told him, he used to call me at like one thirty in the morning when I'm doing a patrol, mm -hmm. and I'd let him talk, and he'd talk for maybe an hour, phone down. stupid me what? for listening, yeah. And um, But he'd tell his horrible, miserable life story. He said that he felt like he was Norm on Cheers. Like He said Norm had a saying on one of the episodes where he walks in, they go, hey, Norm, how's life treating you? Like I'm wearing milk bone underwear and oh. the world's a dog or whatever. My and favorite was uh, like... Like, how's life treating you? Like, it caught me in bed with its wife. <laughs> that was my favorite one. Yeah. I've been watching that. That's a good show. Um, right now, though, Danielle's playing while she sleeps, just fucking Golden Girls again, over and over, <laughs> which is good because I can sleep to it because I don't have to go, what's Rose going to do yeah. now? Um, like I said, there's the murder episode, which was good, mm -hmm. where that girl assisted suicide episode. Yeah. Um, murder episode. <laughs> <laughs> Murder She Wrote meet, meets uh, the Golden Girls. Um, I just wrote a show. Hang on, I gotta write that. <laughs> um, so, um, so he's like, so I told him he. I go, look, I'm real busy because I don't want to talk to him. So I'm like, I'm real busy on this patrol. I can't talk to you. He says, okay. <clears throat> and then he calls me on Saturday at ten thirty, and he goes, look, I knew that I know you're busy, but I need to tell you this. I pulled up here. And I thought the guy's car was parked on this other side. And he goes, and I had a cone. Like, then he started taking the cone out of the car and putting the construction cone in front of his spot so nobody parked there. He goes, the cone's missing. He said, I can't. Um, the I don't know why that does it. The cone's missing. And the guy's car looked like it was parked there, but then the work car was there running. So I pulled up. I parked. I got out. I'm leaning against my car like I do, and I'm waiting. And he goes, and then like 1020, the guy should be done at 10. He goes, 1020, I walk up to the car, to the work car, and it's running and the phone and everything are in it, and he's not even there. And mm -hmm. he goes, so he abandoned his post. That's an immediate firing. I'm going to kill this motherfucker. This motherfucker, if he's here again, I'm going to fucking kill him. And he's like, and you, you tell Baker. I know I'm telling you, but you tell Baker and don't, which is my boss. Yeah. And don't tell Baker... Don't change my wording. You tell him exactly what I said, that I'm going to kill this motherfucker if this happens again. I'm fucking pissed now. He abandoned his post. He should be fired. I said, okay, I'll talk well, to him. Well, which is it? You want him to be fired so, or you want yeah, to kill yeah. him? Well, both. If he sees him again, he's going to kill him. So he wants him gone. He's hoping on Sunday when he comes in, that guy won't be working. He won't be relieving that guy. That's what he wanted. Okay, so where was but this guy? But if the guy's there, he wants to kill him. So I text the guy, and I go, hey, man, you can't be leaving did you leave the post you know what happened he's like yeah i did like the guy before me did when that guy pulled in 
when Craig pulled in, I left because he's there to work the shift. I said, I get that, but the other guy got in trouble because you're leaving the phone in the car, and now for 20 minutes or more, that phone was in the car, and nobody would have he heard it. He left the car running, running the shit in it. Yeah, and the phone, right, because Craig pulled up. Craig thought he Craig was still— Craig is the old man? Craig's the old man. That, the crotchety you know, old man. Yeah, yeah. And, and he didn't see— Craig thought he was in the car doing his reports. Oh, so, so that's so why Craig he, didn't, just he just waited sat by, there and waited. Yeah, he just waited by his car. What did he want this guy to do? Get up and he wants tap the guy him on to, the shoulder and say, here, He I'm, wants the I'm guy leaving. to get out, and he wants everybody to meet with him. Hey, oh, here's the phone. Sake. Here's what happened. Nothing happened. Whatever. And um, so I talked to the guy, and um, the guy's like, well, that's he what— He probably got out of his car and said, later, Craig. Have a yeah, good night. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, and he goes, he goes, that's what the guy did before— um, I'm serious. <laughs> My computer is, I don't know why it does that. I think it's because this a, is a TV and not a monitor, maybe. I think it's like a screensaver. It does it after a certain amount of time. Well, it shouldn't. I need well, to you fix can probably that. Go but also settings. this, though, then goes off and blinks. That's what but I mean. I guess it's because that turns off. Right. No. Yeah. Anyway, might be. Whatever. <laughs> so, the TV might have a screensaver um, on it, too. I, it does. Um, there you go. Problem solved. So, um, what was I saying, Joe? Um, Craig. Oh, so, so then, so I tell the guy. The guy goes, "No, I just did." I go, "Well, don't do that again, because you left the phone in the car. Just wait for Craig. At least hand him the phone and then leave." He's like, "Okay." So, I don't tell. Oh, by Craig, the way, Craig's gonna kill. Yeah. You. So I don't tell Craig that I talked to the guy. Like, why do I need to? Hey, it's Craig. Not your responsibility to keep him informed. Right. So I'm like, kind of thing. so I'm like, fuck it. So I go ahead and do my patrol. And then I text Baker, who's the boss. And I said, I said, hey, here's what's going on. I said, Craig said he's going to kill this motherfucker, quote unquote, if he sees him again. And I said, I know it's Craig and maybe it's nothing, but it is a threat. We do need to know about it. And he's yeah, what like, if, what if this kid ends up dead? And yeah. And I said, also, um, He's, I said, all of his stuff is nothing. It's somebody parked in my spot. Why isn't this stuff charged? How come the guy's not ready to leave when I get here 15 till? Like, mm -hmm. all this stuff. And so uh, Baker's like, okay, I'll talk to him. And then um, the guy shows up Sunday, right, to work. The guy that, the guy that I said, just car. don't do that again. Yeah. I said, just hand him off the phone. All of a sudden, the guy shows up on Sunday. I don't get a call. I don't get anything. Was he supposed um, to I knew, show up? Yeah, the guy was supposed to work. So I knew all that. And uh, Baker didn't talk to anybody until Monday. And so I get to back to my car where I leave for my patrol mm -hmm. is kind of in the same complex, but my car is parked over by the bank. So he's right there. So all of a sudden, there's a note on my car Monday morning when I arrive mm -hmm. uh, to my car. And I'm getting ready, and I'm like, oh, good, Craig's not here. I thought he'd talk to me or whatever. And I start piling all my stuff in the car, and then I look, and on my windshield, there's this. And it's all not, hey, Philip, from Craig. It's Mr. Duke. I refuse to believe that asshole was back after Saturday night. I hope you didn't make the decision. If you did, you made a very, very, very bad mistake. I doubt it makes a difference, uh, but the cone from car is gone also. I guess there is no use in calling for a while, since still nothing, underlined three times, gets done for all the hell I go through, and it doesn't stop. Have a good life, and see you whenever. Thanks, Officer Mullins. So. Did he quit? I said, no, he just isn't going to talk to me anymore, which oh. to me, I'm like, great, I don't have to. Look at Everybody who talks to him is like, this one guy goes, he just brings my day down, like I'm having a good day, and mm -hmm. then he comes in and goes, you know, he's like Charlie Brown, like all sad and everything. Debbie Downer. And, uh, yeah. And um, uh, feline AIDS. And uh, <laughs> so he, um, so then that was Monday morning. Then I'm off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then last week I come back to work on Friday over there. Saturday morning he's there, like, by my car when I pull up. And he's all big smile on his face. That other guy ended up quitting because um, he has another job. So the other guy ended up quitting. So now he's all happy. Hey, you know, I couldn't believe it that that guy quit. But it, but I pull up, and the first thing I say when I get out, and he's leaning up against the hood of the Prius, mm -hmm. I said, um, I go, you know, I said, I got your letter. 
I said, and I passed everything on, you know, but I got your letter, meaning this. Yeah. And he goes, uh, he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what Craig calls tough love. I said, wasn't What's really what? this thing is him being tough love, like making me. Oh, wait, who are you talking to? This Craig, Craig. Okay. Uh, the guy that wrote the letter. All right. The other guy had already left. Yeah. So Craig's there in the morning uh-huh. just to show up to talk to me. He doesn't and have to work. He's just there to talk. No, he's he's working, but he's, like I said, it's in the same kind of oh, complex. Oh, okay. So he just drove there and was sitting there. So he's like, uh, that's called tough love. And I said, well, no, because I did everything you said on there. I had already done. So, and um, but I'm just being, I'm not being chatty Cathy and happy with mm-hmm. him. I'm just like, well, and um, grab all the stuff. I start putting it away. And he's like, yeah, I couldn't believe that that guy quit. And I was like, no way. And I'm so happy. You know, oh, my gosh. And so then I go, and I'm not saying much. And then I get in the, I go to get in the car, and I go, so let me tell you. So I lay out everything that I did after mm-hmm. he called me. I said, so I did all that. So I don't know what the letter was for. And uh, I go, okay, got to go. And I close the door, and I back out. And he's still leaning against the car, like waiting for us to chit-chat for mm-hmm. five or ten more minutes like we sometimes do. And uh, so I just backed up and drove <laughs> off. And, and I was watching him in the rearview mirror, and he was still like, I think, like, what's up? Like, he doesn't get, like, you write me this, thinking that I didn't do my job as a yeah. supervisor. And now I'm supposed to be like, oh, that's cool. Whatever. You know, that's fine. So. You should have poked him in the chest and said, listen here, you fucking old man. You never question yeah. my ability to do my job again, and I will end you. Well, I wanted to fire him. But because uh, I told Baker, I said insubordination. I said he always bitches about whoever's there. I don't think it matters. I said there's never happiness with him. I said he's always angry at something. I tell him to listen to music, do something to be happy, and he just no, no, that won't whatever. So I said we should fire him, but or put him at a post where he doesn't have anybody to relieve. So he's by himself. Yeah. So then he can't bitch about anything. And um, and then. Uh, and then Monday he calls Baker and starts, well, here's what happened on Saturday and blah, blah, blah. And I'm so angry. And Baker's like, okay, stop right there. First of all, the parking space is nothing. Like you could park anywhere. The thing about coming mm-hmm. to, don't come to work early. Um, you know, go up to the guy in the car instead of having the guy come to you, you know, mm-hmm. all this stuff. And, um, and just try to get along with everybody. And maybe it's because you're sitting against your car with your arms crossed and people <laughs> think that you're, you know, hard to get to. And um, so then Baker says, and the other thing, you made a threat. Any other job, you would be fired immediately because you threatened another employee. Yeah. He's like, so you're lucky that you're not fired. And so then, you know, that shut Craig down right away. So because then, yeah, that was one of the things Craig said when I showed up was, yeah, you said that was a threat. I said it was. <laughs> it was a threat. <laughs> So he's like, oh. said, yeah, but he even said not to change his words. You yeah. Tell him, just like I said. Yeah. I still have, I have this other guy not to get all into work. Um, this other guy that I don't know if I told you, I wrote him a text once and I said, he's Mexican guy. I wrote him a text. I said, I'm freed up. I can come and see you. I'm going to stop by. So all of a sudden the next time when I'm seeing him, he goes, he goes, Hey, um, yeah, do you hate me or something? I go, no, why? Because you wrote like you're fed up. I said, no, I wrote freed up. I'm freed up. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> it means I'm available to come and see you. Like, I have free time. And then the other day, he was just like, you walked around with me for, th- oh, yeah, I I talked to him on the phone. I got another call. I told him to hang on. Uh-huh. And then I forgot about him. But also, I was on the other line. And then he hung up. And then he calls back like an hour later. Uh-huh. And I'm like, hey, Miguel, what's up? And he's like, he goes, um, yeah, you hung up on me. And I go, oh, I'm sorry. I go, he goes, I was waiting and you never came back. I said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I said, I didn't mean that. Yeah, well, you do it a lot. and It's starting to piss me off. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry. I don't do it on purpose. I was just letting, you know, sorry. And um, so then he's like, because I think like you hate me like that day you were over here for like three hours. He goes, I know that. With Blue Steel, they always watched us and did all this. To all the sergeants would watch over the wall and spy on us. And I go, yeah, we're not at Blue Steel. We're at Community Action Security. Like, yeah. it's totally different. And he goes, he goes, 
He goes, yeah, but you used to work for Blue Steel. And I said, yeah, but I don't anymore. <laughs> and I said, that was their management style. My management style came from Community Action. Mm-hmm. I've been working there since 2000. Because he goes, I guess you have a history with them. I said, yeah, I told you. 2003, like I started, I left yeah. for a year and nine months. And um, he's like, well, I just... I just think like you hate me like who comes you come to my post and you walked around with me for three hours and you didn't say much. And then you had me fill out some paperwork of like all this information that I never have to give at any other job. All of a sudden I get to give it here. I said, that was a post check. I said, it was a form that <laughs> you haven't said, been doing that. <laughs> I said, it was a form that I fill out that says what's your guard card expiration date? Like, you know, how do you know the post? I said, do you know computers and the phone? Like, do you get all that? I nice. said, I marked all that down. I said, and I have 12 hours to fill in a night. So I said, I guess I'll hang out here for three hours. And I go, and why I didn't say much was because I was following you to see what you knew mm. without leading you anywhere. Then I go, okay, he's got it. And then I leave. And I go, so I didn't mean anything by that. Well, and then you wrote that text to me. And that I'm, I'm fed up. I go, it said freed up. I said, I told you and Baker told you. That doesn't mean fed up. It says freed up. Yeah, I still don't know what that means. Said if How I said this guy, he's like 27 or something. Now yeah. that you said he's Mexican. Is he like English as a second language? Mexican? He's got or? he's got a an accent. He's got like broken English a little bit when he talks, oh. but not so bad. Um, But it's just it's like insane that, you know. He would that these are the people that are securing that, our, well, our that, workplaces. That too. That's the big one. Well, and then <laughs> the other day he got upset with one of the guys. So I finally I said, Look, there's nothing Fuck him be- and Craig up together. I go, Yeah. I go, There's nothing between you and I. I said, I'm fine with you. You write good reports, everything's good. He's like, Okay. Um But why do you hate me? Then yeah. <laughs> Essay. And then he's like, All right. And then the other then I haven't talked to him and then last weekend this other guy calls me who thinks he's a supervisor. He just got a raise, but he feels like he's a supervisor. Mm. He uh, he was like, yeah, the guy called me and was like, that same guy, Miguel, and was like, there was a guy coming onto the property, and I said, hey, do you live here? And the guy said, no, I'm here to see my girlfriend. And he said, what unit? And the guy didn't know, and he's trying to get into the place. And he goes, you need to leave. And he goes, and as the guy was leaving, the guy said, watch your back. <laughs> and he goes, so I call. It, so the way he did it was when he talks to this other supervisor, pseudo supervisor, he's like, "So I called the police. Police are on their way." Like he's out of breath, and he's like, "Wait, what? What happened? What's going on?" And that's when he tells him this guy oh. threatened him, and he goes, and the guy goes, "Well, you can't really threaten. You can't really call the police on every threat that a guard gets because yeah. it's going to be the boy who cried wolf. And then when something does happen, they're not going to show up." And he's like, "No, no," he said. Uh, he goes, I don't, he said, uh, he goes, are you afraid to work there? Is that why? And he said that was the wrong thing. Cause all, cause this guy's like a little short guy. Like he's got a complex or something. Mm-hmm. So he's like, well, no, I'm not afraid. I know all kinds of stuff. I can hurt people. I can get in fights and da da da. <laughs> and he's like, I'm just saying, if you aren't comfortable working there, I can find a place for you. We can move you out of there and put someone, oh, so I'm fired now. No, oh you're God. not fired. Like, but he's also a guy that doesn't listen. Like, sit there and talk to him and then he's just like Mm -hmm. saying uh, and you're like are you even listening to me (laughs) so um so then at the end of the shit so then he tells the pseudo supervisor like we don't even we're not communicating obviously he goes you and i shouldn't talk to each other because we're not communicating because you you came at me hostile you're talking to me in a hostile aggressive way and he said that to the to that other pseudo supervisor oh and the pseudo supervisor is like i just talk how I'm not going to, you know, treat you with kid gloves. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say fucking do this shit. So he says, um, so uh, the guy's like, we just shouldn't talk, whatever. And he says, okay, well, I just want to let you know you're fine. Everything's good. Next thing you know is five. This is now two hours later. All of a sudden he gets a text going, well, I guess I'm fired. So if you don't hear from me, that's what happened. And the guy goes, you're not fired, Miguel. Like, everything's cool. And the guy didn't respond so then he tells me what the text was the pseudo supervisor and i'm like why don't you call him and apologize and he's like no i already apologized to him earlier and i go yeah but we want somebody to come to work tonight so at least just yeah you know 
And he's like, no, I'll just tell Baker. So he told Baker, and then Baker had it ironed out. But it was like, I told Baker, I go, this guy just doesn't listen. He just, all he hears is a negative little bits and just jumps on that mm-hmm. and thinks you're against him. And it's like, I do my job. Yeah, we know you do your job. Anyway, sorry wow. to bore everybody with that. So my dad, father knows best. Mm. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, so he called me on 4th of July. He usually, every time I talk to him, he's like, what are your days off? Because he forgets. <laughs> and I oh, say Monday. That t- reminds me. Uh-oh. I need to tell you. Okay. You about can tell. days off. Oh, secret. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, I hope it's a Tuesday because then we can go see planes, trains, and automobiles no, in November. You son of a bitch. Um, hang on. Now everybody's like, "What? What's Joe's big secret?" <laughs> um, so he always like doesn't know that. You know, calls me every once. So we should hang out. I'm working, or everything is always the first thing out of his mouth. You working? Yeah. When are your days off again? They tell. Him. So this time he calls, and it's July third. And he's like, hey, uh, you're not working, right? And I go, no, no. I'm in my head. Oh, he knows I'm not working on Monday. And uh, he's like, okay. He said, uh, yeah, I'm over here in uh, in uh, uh, Cotton, not Cottonwood, but Camp Verde, hmm. working, doing security or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay. And um, he's like, yeah, and then we're it's talking. A bit of a commute. I said, you need to get, no, he stays up there. They give him a per diem. And then he stays in his car. Either way, he's, he just takes his house with him. He either lives here oh, or his car. Oh, this is your dad. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Who did you think? I, oh. I forgot you were Oh, no. I'm sorry. Dad. Father knows That's best. My father. Yes. So, dad goes, I'm in Camp Verde. He said, um, you know, I'm working here so many days. I may be here all month. I said, but dad, something else that I forgot to tell you. So, I said, you need an interlock device on your car now for a year. So, here he was going to get a place. Everything was working out good, he thought. And now he's going to have to pay $100 or more a month to have this interlock device. And you can't be parking your car behind the bar, leave the bar from drinking, go to the car, sleep, wake up in the morning to go to work and blow in it because he doesn't know, but he smells like booze like whenever he's been drinking all the mm-hmm. time. And I go, you know, it's like a beer an hour. So if you're drinking like small pitchers and large pitchers, and you go, like, in the morning, you're not going to be able to start your car because it's going to fail. And so he's like, oh, yeah, well, I could stop drinking. I could, I'm not an alcoholic. I can stop any time. I said, okay. Mm-hmm. He goes, I did it before, remember? Yeah, for that little bit when you had the heart attack or whatever it was, heart palpitation. And um, from doing too much crystal. <laughs> so I said, um, uh. That was when the nurse goes, oh, you don't know? Yeah, he's doing crystal meth. He needs to not do that. And the doctors he, doctors were like, hey, you want something? And he pulled it out of his pocket. Here's my bindle or whatever. Oh, Jesus. Um, so he says, uh, so he's uh, so he's telling me about Camp Verde and all this. And then he uh, goes, what are you guys doing? And I said, we're doing 4th of July early with the kids. We do the ground fireworks, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so he's like, oh, okay. And, um, and then he said... He goes, oh, did I tell you that uh, Amberly and I had talked about maybe getting married? Oh, my God. <laughs> and I said, no. Danielle goes, is she still going to live in her halfway house or wherever <laughs> she lives? Or how's that going to work? I said, yeah, I don't know. He didn't go into detail. He they'll, just get a, uh, they'll get a newer, bigger car for them to share. Oh, yeah, yeah. They'll get like a station wagon yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, like the v- on vacation. Yeah. And um, so then he's he's talking to me, and then I'm talking to him about this one bar-type restaurant that's up there that me and Colleen stopped at going to Meteor Crater. And I said, oh, they have these good, you know, uh, beer-battered fish. And it's real good. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, oh, yeah, it's weird that you say that. I went there, and they were the size of my thumb, and I complained because it was $15 for this thing. And didn't get big fish. And I said, oh, okay. So he's telling me all about that. <laughs> then while he's talking to me, some people walk by. And what his security is is, like, down power lines for APS. Mm. So yeah. these people were walking by in the neighborhood, and he was like, he goes, oh, hang on, Philip. He goes, hey, thanks for those plums yesterday, because people give him stuff. And um, he's like, thanks for those plums. He goes, they were really good. And they were like, oh, they're not quite ripe. Like, wait a couple of days, they'll be even better. And he's like, yeah, I'm on the phone with my son. My son loves plums. And and then he gets back on the phone, and he's you like, like, hey. plums, right? He goes, no, here's what's funny. So he goes, hey, what's going on? And I was laughing, and he goes, what? I go, it's funny that... You don't remember my birthday or my days <laughs> off, but you remember that I like plums. 
And he's like, oh, yeah, I guess that is kind of funny. <laughs> it's wow. like, wow. <laughs> so it's like, oh. That's but, not funny. Yeah. Well, you know. Do you, have, uh, do you have any father stories? No. No? I don't. Nothing? I don't. Uh, as bad as your father seems to be, you still talk to yours way more than I talk to mine. Well, and that's usually because he calls me. Every once in a while, I, well, go, that's true. I go, I should call him just to say that I called him. You yeah. Know, hey, I called you. <laughs> um, so I have these uh, stories. Yes. I, uh, I don't want to rush through everything, but I know I bored everybody with the work stuff. But um, so um, there's a story about the snake. This woman sleeps with her giant anaconda or whatever it is. And yeah. so one day she stopped, the thing stopped eating and it would always sleep with her. And she was like, I can't get it to eat nothing. And she took it to the vet and the vet said, where is it? Um, she's Python more and more. And it had recently become a nightly thing, but she grew a little worried, not by the sleeping situation, but more by the health of her snake. He appeared to have begun losing weight. Then one day he stopped eating entirely, so she took him to the vet. The prognosis? Terrifying. The vet heard about the issue and asked some questions. When the vet heard about sleeping situation, <laughs> she knew exactly what was happening. <laughs> the snake had stopped eating in order to prepare itself for a t particular large meal, its owner. Sleeping so close to this human, he had begun to fancy her as dinner. But knowing her to be a, a big meal, he had started starving himself to make room. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, got snake, don't sleep with it. Wow. Yeah. So, that was... Uh, Is that a real picture? I think so, yeah. If she's insane. I mean, it looks like it. But, uh, yeah, I'll uh, share that on the, on the Facebook. She deserves Twitter's. whatever she gets. Yeah, exactly. Okay, where's my thing? Hello, Apple. Hello. Oh, hey, yeah, talks to me. Um... So that was weird. And then I got, hello, there it is. So then this one is interesting. I kind of don't want you to read it, but. Okay. Um, Why did they just <laughs> blur out their eyes? <laughs> but uh, so that you can't identify that them in public. That looks even creepier. <laughs> I know, it's a horror movie. Yeah. Uh, tragedy after popular JAV, which I think stands for Japanese Adult Video. Actress drowns while filming Bukaki. No, scene in she Tokyo. did not. <laughs> I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, it's a. Uh, she, um, for this scene, there were around 30 male actors lined up, said the camera operator. The actress was kneeling on the ground, and the actors were taking turns to ejaculate onto her. The director insisted that they direct their semen to her mouth, which is quite normal in JAV movie. However, it appears that the actress began to choke at some point during the process. In fact, that was not immediately apparent the director and other male, to the director and other male actors. The camera operator explained that they assumed she was simply acting, when in reality she was struggling to breathe. It came as quite a shock to us when she collapsed, she told, <laughs> he told journalists. And no one was willing to give her mouth to mouth. The director, the di it's getting to that. Oh, the no. director was, was angry kidding. at first, telling her that she'd run the shot. However, when it became clear that she really couldn't breathe, everyone became shocked. The camera operator said many of the male actors became quite panicked, but none of them who had received medical training rushed forward to help. He tried to scoop as much uh. of the semen out before starting mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, but it was too late. There was nothing anyone could have done. Bukaki, a word meaning to splash rudely, has become one of the most <laughs> popular acts depicting Japanese. Da, da, da. Um, wow. This could definitely have major implications for the JAV industry, said one of the adult movie analysts. If the authorities demand a ban on Bukaki, which is likely the aftermath of this tragedy, then it could really have an impact on industry revenue. So, yeah, that's why, because they're all murderers. Uh, I don't know if I believe this. Okay, well, I have a scenario now for you. You ready? Okay, this is 16 years in the future. Okay. 16, why 16 years? I'll tell you. Hello, Joe. Hello. We've, oh, wait. Hello, Joe. <laughs> I've Hello. just kidnapped your daughter. Oh, God. We put her in, we don't, you don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> and so 
you're like, you know, you're like Liam Neeson. Uh-huh. And then you tell them what? I have a particular set of skills. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want with my daughter? Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't like where this is going. My daughter's only five, everybody. Yeah, it's that's why I said it's real. I oh, thought, 60, of, the, gotcha, I thought gotcha. of this gotcha. last night, and I was like, I was like, this is bad, but yeah. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> sexy stuff. Sexy stuff. <laughs> so, so you, um, so you find her phone under the bed, and yeah. you, you know, do all that, and you take it to your buddy from Seven, and uh, <laughs> he he runs the uh, the analyst, and he finds buddy out from Seven, uh, the guy that was the guy. I fucking, they made me strap it on, and I fucking oh, yeah, fucked yeah, her yeah. with my knife. Um. <laughs> Yeah. So um he uh so uh anyway, so then you go there and you walk in the room mm-hmm. and she's just fallen over. She's the bukaki scene. She's just fallen over. Do you run over <laughs> and scoop it? <laughs> scoop it yes, up. Yes, I or, do. Like I said, right now you've only known her five years. Wow. Like, <laughs> like you no. don't know her that much. <laughs> like you're like, eh, no. whatever. Um, yes, I would do whatever I could to save my daughter. Or do you just leave it in and you just... No, <laughs> I don't leave it in. But that's like, that's what me and Danielle were like, oh my oh God, my like God. I didn't even think about when I was reading that first, I didn't think about the the resuscitation thing until I got to the part where it said, yeah. I was like, oh shit, yeah, they got to do that. And then it's like, all these other dudes come and you got to fucking, uh, uh. but no. um, yeah. What if there's guys with guns attacking you? Are you going to... Are you proficient? You're gonna well, kill them, There's kill them, man helper, do. kill them, man helper, not all a lot at once. Because you're like uh, the, you're like Flint. <laughs> Flint. <laughs> it's a '60s reference. reference. I remember when he uh, he had to Neither save one of us somebody. Even alive. He had to save. He had to save somebody, and he uh, broke a lamp, and then shocked them, defibrillated them with a lamp that he broke. Oh, yeah. Sounds was, like MacGyver. Yeah, she just like, said MacGyver. Oh, oh, he's Flint. He's like James Bond, but British. Although he's by American James actor, Bond James Coburn. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then American. I'm an American because James Coburn's American. Gotcha. Was. Rest oh, in peace. Didn't make 70 grand? My suits cost more than that. They didn't make 20-something Flint movies, so apparently he wasn't I know. as they good. Made, they made two. Yeah. But just like uh, Matt Helm movies, they made three of those, I think. That was cool. Matt Helm. Had this bed. Another one no one has heard of <laughs> or even cares about. I know, but this is why we're friends. Cause you can't you, talk about you Bond. Know, you, know, you know who I mean. So, had this bed, and when his alarm went off, the bed went and leveled up like out. a like a doctor's thing. And his But his blankets and everything went into the pool, and then he drops into the pool and then yeah. gets out, and he's all refreshed and ready to go for the day. Yeah. Gets stressed and everything. It's genius. Yeah, I thought so. Nothing can go wrong. Exactly. So, um, hang on. We got Do you have any f- other horrible, horrible stories? Oh yeah. So there's uh, tell Joe a scenario. Yes. Um, okay, and then this one, this could happen to you, Joe. You have a big penis. Oh, I heard about this. <laughs> Florida man accused of murder, asked to show jury his penis as evidence. Girlfriend died during oral sex. So a Florida man accused of murdering his girlfriend wants to enter his penis into evidence in an oral death trial, (laughs) oral sex death trial. Richard Patterson, 65, has admitted he choked his girlfriend, Francisco Marquinez, 60, to death on October 28, 2015, but claims it happened accidentally during oral sex. Is there a picture of this guy? Um, Yeah. (laughs) Look at this guy. I was going to say, what is that? He looks like Simon Pegg in The Force Awakens. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, um... Um, I'll show, he's coming down here in a minute. He's coming down. He's going down. He had some sixty-year-old um, broad. So he was sixty-five. He had sixty-year-old blowing him. Um, he's now seeking a judge's permission to show the jury his penis to prove her death was a mistake. Patterson's attorney said his client's member figures prominently in his rough sex defense, which hinges on the argument that Martinez died accidentally while engaging in consensual sexual activity. Uh, Padowitz has enlisted expert witness and former Broward County Broward County medical examiner Dr. Ronald Wright to testify that Marquina's death is consistently consistent with being accidentally sexually asphyxiated during oral sex. 
He insists That's a thing. He insists that a viewing of Patterson's penis is integral to the jury understanding rights argument. I think that's uh, that's him and that's his sixty year old. Um, although the object is oh, I to meant, be uh, viewed, was our picture of his penis. Oh no, not yet. Um, <laughs> although the object is to be viewed is not a place but a part of the human anatomy, it is material and relevant. The view by the jury is essential for them to fully understand Dr. Wright's testimony in the defense in this case. Brooklyn defense lawyer who has a variation of rough sex defense in court, isn't convinced that Patterson needs to disrobe in front of the jury. Really, couldn't they just make a mold or something? She told the Sun mm-hmm. Sentinel. Yeah. So that's what the, and there he is. Looks better there. Than yeah, but he's the, white. Nobody's going to believe that a white man has a cock big enough to well, true. choke somebody. True. Maybe you could uh, be his, uh, you could testify, no. uh, be one of his uh, I don't know trial, what you've heard. trial people. I heard from your wife. I don't know if it's a. Uh, <laughs> it might be just like a tuna can. It's like a tuna and just can. real short. Yeah, <laughs> but, but real bo- yeah. <laughs> real big. I always girthy. thought it was like For this. Girthy, yeah, this uh, Batman cup here, like a, four, like four a big ounce. beer can, like this uh, porno star. He, they called him beer, beer Can Billy, yeah. and he had this big uh, beer can dick. Um, okay, so now on to this story. So. This is 19 inches. Saw I told this. you I had props, right? I watched this. Yeah. I yeah, did too. That's 19 inches. And there's a picture in here. Oh, I'm yeah. going to share this on the Facebook page. But the man who went viral for his 19 inch penis explains why he refuses to have it reduced. But in here, in here, in here, when. Psych- inch. See, there it is in his yeah, pant leg. I've seen, I saw this. Um, but the people had told him. Um, when I found this, I go, oh, I got to talk about this on the podcast. Yeah. And Danielle goes, I'm so glad my parents don't don't listen to your podcast. Um, Roberto Cabrera and his bulge. <laughs> the um, they when he talked to a psychiatrist, the psychiatrist got from him that he had actually made it longer by hanging weights and things from it. Mm-hmm. So it was like, <laughs> yeah, it's like he's holding a, a sock, like, <laughs> like a, a pepperoni, like pepper, yeah. I'm ready to make the pizza. Yeah. Um, Is that the fucking count from Sesame Street? <laughs> well, it's a little bit it's of that. Like it's a, a little Italian bit of vampire. A, yeah. It's a <laughs> one, a two, a three. Uh. <laughs> yeah. There's no point in keeping um, that penis. He can't use it yeah. for sex. Well, and then it's and one it's of those. It's not even a penis. It's mostly just it's the f- a, an extra. It's a that lot of gross foreskin. foreskin. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. So. He's an idiot. If I was a woman, I would not want no. a guy with foreskin. He it said he, gross. Didn't he say he hasn't had sex. In yeah, the, I think the last time. Well, the last. So they said, why won't he be eligible for the Guinness Book of World's Record? Is because he exposed himself to some young girls when he was in Florida when he was in the states one time. He's from Mexico, by the way. But uh, that's what it said on one of the things that I read. But. Um, the doctor explained him and determined that his penis is real but abnormal. Apparently, most of the lengths comprise a massive distended foreskin. But where was the place? Um, wasn't there? Oh, maybe it was. Anyway, that he hung weights from it and stuff that they found out. Yeah. This so he's a fucking idiot. And he keeps it wrapped in bandages. Yeah. So I could only imagine what it looks like outside of those bandages. Ugh. Ugh. Especially where he lived. You saw the video, so you oh, saw yeah. where he lived. So he yeah. lived in like a tin shed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like somebody's backyard shed. Yeah. It was uh, it was horrible. So um, apparently having that big old penis isn't uh, bringing in the dollars. That's right. Well, that's because uh, you're going to rip apart some women. Um, um, speaking of that, mm-hmm. um, I have a this girl at work. Speaking of what? penises and this girl uh, sex at work has with a penis? people no but um this girl at work she uh she's trying to oh, i guess never mind i won't talk about it anyway she's <laughs> wanting this guy to put out her boyfriend uh-huh. they've been dating for a month but mm-hmm. he won't put out so she doesn't know if it's her or what and, like she tries to be intimate with him and he kind of pulls away and he's like oh i'm not used to people touching me i'm sorry mm-hmm. but he said he's been with nine people so nine women, because I said, you sure they're women? Maybe they're <laughs> dudes. And um, she's like, so anyway, it was just weird. Her and I were talking about that this morning, like how weird it was. That came and went with no nope. payoff. Well, I thought that you would <laughs> explain to me I, uh, I your know? thoughts. What do you think 
a guy either who's he's gay or mm-hmm. he's not attracted to her. My wife said, or she's she, overly aggressive, and it kind of puts him off a little bit. Oh, speaking of that, the girl that listens—that's the girl, the girl that wrote the email. Mm. But she, it's her, had yeah. But she had said, um, what did she say? Um, oh, she told her mom because my name is Philip Duke the second, and she peed, and yeah. Um, cause I'm Philip Duke second, so I sound like royalty or whatever. Sir Joe always said Philip Duke the third sounds like royalty. Anyway, her mom would say, who's this guy on Facebook? This Philip Duke. And she goes, oh, he's a prince who told me if I give him a hundred bucks, like he'll give me. <laughs> and her mom bought it. And her mom's like, really? She goes, I don't think you need. No, mom, he's legit. Like I swear. And I go, you need to tell her. Wow. She goes, no. She goes, I'm not going to tell her. I'm going to, you know, I said, oh my God. So her mom, so her mom doesn't put together listening to the podcast that I'm Philip, and that, mm-hmm. you know, the Philip Duke, Philip on, the Duke. Yeah, she doesn't put those. So yeah. she's just like, and then she's telling the neighbors, my daughter gave like on her no, bus she to didn't. some, oh some guy, God. and I'm like, you need to tell her, like, poor girl, poor woman. So anyway, no, just leave her, leave her be. Well, this show is uh, not much of Joe talking other than saving his daughter. No. Um, <laughs> So shows I've been watching, yeah. Orange is New Black, no. Glow. I haven't yet, but I, I finished it. Orange is New Black. I finished Glow. Um, the house we just, watched It's only been yesterday. on for like a week, and you finished it already? What, R- Glow? Yeah. It's only 10, 10 episodes, but yeah. That's only 10 hours of my life. Oh, here's the thing. So Joe says, oh, you're behind on certain scale. You need to. So who watched fucking 55, listen to 55 episodes of the podcast, making me demented? All oh, like, you did to, yeah, you like since we, yeah, since we did the last podcast, like I was on episode thirty-five or something or forty, and then I listened to fifty-three <laughs> episodes or more. So, did you listen to the newest one? Yeah, and uh, the one that really got me was episode seventy. Uh, wasn't the major thing. Like I wrote this on the Facebook page because um, somebody was like, they said that the Edwin Kemper thing really disturbed them that they could put up with people killing people. But when he killed his mother and had sex with her head, oh, yeah. like that was a line that, yeah, <laughs> that, that they were that's, like, it's, it's weird. Too far. That's just too far. And I said, the one that really messed me up was episode 70. It wasn't the main story, but it was that little Japanese girl that was like 17. And they held her for 45 oh, days and yeah, tortured yeah, yeah. her with like just horrible, like oh, yeah. cut off pieces of her. And uh. yeah, and, and the parents were in the house. The parents like knew the whole time that guy's parents. Mm-hmm. And just like was afraid of the yakuza. He was part yakuza or something. And yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'm all caught up now, which sucks because now I'm all caught up. So, like the other day when I listened to ninety three or ninety two, whatever, I was like ninety three was a recent one, I think. Oh, right? episode yeah. ninety. Yeah. Then I was like, it like went real fast. I was like, whoa, it's over now. Like, <laughs> you oh, it's know, a two parter. Yeah. Another part. Well, and then they said if you're a Patreon subscriber, yeah, but you I'm not, get so. that already. Yeah, I know. Me neither. Um, so anyway, went and saw the house mm-hmm. yesterday. That was funny, but it's like your regular, you know, you don't need to buy, you can get it at Redbox or something. Yeah. Um, baby driver was really good. You should go see that. Yeah. I bought the soundtrack. I got home. I'm like, honey, that soundtrack. I go, it's like 20 bucks. And she goes, but that's expensive. Like that's no big deal. I go, no, but I'm just, I said, it's good. Cause you get 30 songs, but normally a soundtrack is like 10 bucks. Mm-hmm. And I go, now it's like 20 bucks, but you get 30 songs, but it's a good soundtrack. Um, saw Wonder Woman. I think you saw Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, liked it. Uh, Transformers, The Last Night. I said, honey, we'll go see that. She goes, have a good time. So I went and, uh, yeah, it was horrible. And, um, but she'll go see the next one. And well, I, well, here's the thing. So I was talking to Chip and Chip goes, he bef- liked it didn't before he? all this. Yeah, um, Chip said. Well, and then I, him and I thought from the trailer that Optimus Prime is going to go bad. Mm-hmm. He's going to end up dying, mm-hmm. and they're going to do the "You got the touch" and <laughs> Hot wish. Rod. Hot Rod's going to put the thing in, and he's going to be. I wish they would just do a, a modern day reboot of that original Transformers movie. Yeah, with Unicron. So, so I was like, so I was hoping for that. So I went Which and saw Orson and Welles. Final performance, and I know Unicron I, yeah, in was, the Transformers yeah. movie. And then Chip was going to go see it the next day, so I went and saw it. And then Chip, of course, asked me though, I have to ask because my wife is worried that Bumblebee dies, 
and I said, <sighs> she's worried Bumblebee dies. She's worried that she's going to be emotionally like upset when Bumblebee dies, if he dies. And there's a scene in the trailer where he gets cut and he falls into pe- or gets blasted and he falls mm-hmm. into pieces, but he comes back together as a as a VW Bug. I oh, hope. and they give him a new voice uh, box and it's like Siri <laughs> or something. It's funny. Um, anyway, so he rips it out and he just talks with the radio like he does. Oh, okay. um, but they do have Unicron in this. Why is he the only one that talks through the car radio? Um, I don't know. I think they all should. But I. Yeah. But that's his gimmick. I like his gimmick. Um, but it should be the same so, for everybody. So I thought, like Chip, Chip had told me, like, this is what I think will happen. And I said, oh, my God, that would be good. So then I was like, oh, that would be so good. So that was the other reason why I went. So when I got out and Chip's like, how was it? I was like, it was it was good. You know, I didn't want to go. Mm-hmm. It's nothing of what you thought it was going to be because then he'll be like me. Like, I kept waiting. When's Optimus going to die and when's Hot Rod going to show up? Because Hot, Hot, Hot Rod's in the movie. Yeah. And he's got, like, this British voice because he's in England, been in London forever, being the vehicle of... Uh, Anthony Hopkins and um, so I was like oh my god they're going to do it but they didn't but Chip but then at the end it's got like a post credit sequence of them in the in the desert there was this thing that started to expose itself and you thought it was I think part of a ship one of their ships but it wasn't it's like Unicron trying to take over something oh it is so yeah so and Unicron in this movie was the bad guy he was trying to it was a girl, and she's from Cybertron, and she brought Cybertron closer to Earth, and it was going to crash into Earth and destroy it. And it's slowly like coming together, Cybertron is. Mm-hmm. So then Optimus and them are like, well, now we can go live on our planet, you know, that's kind of half together, and we can live there. And she, they thought def- they defeated her, but now she's like in Unicron in the Earth or some, something. I forget exactly. It makes total sense. I know. But, uh, but now, so... I was like, well, that didn't happen. And Chip's like, yeah, but Unicron, that ending thing with Unicron, that means like next maybe they'll kill Prime and have, you know, have Hot Rod be the, you know. My, Mark Wahlberg says he's done. This is his last movie. I doubt it. I mean, it's they'll money. Give him a shit ton of money. But, yeah. For the one final movie. Yeah. No, true. Um, the Belco Experiment. Have you heard about that? I've That's the one where the people in the office and yeah. you got to kill thirty people within, yeah. and, and it's got the guy that killed yeah. Patrick Swayze in and the Ghost. Um, it's good. It's fun, fun, fun. and good, it's fun, fun and good, fun yeah. and good. Yeah, Transformers last night was fun and good. No, no, no. Transformers last night was not good <laughs> at all, and I was sitting there like, part of me is like, okay, I want to see where this goes, and part of me goes, I need to stop. Just like. Alien Covenant was horrible, but I'm going to go back again to see the next one because oh. I because like I said, they're leading up to an end game, and they're not. Yeah, but if everything leading up to the one you know is good as shit, then what's the point? Right. Yeah. If You're all right. the other ones are weak until you get to the one you've already seen a hundred times, that's great. Yeah. Then you just wasted all that time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess. But Ridley Scott does them, so I try yeah, to give he, him credit. But he's, but not he's doing been good. doing he's been doing horrible things. Did you see Gods and no. that Egyptian movie? No. That was horrible. As Moses, it was a Moses yeah. movie. Yeah, he's n- he's lost his mm-hmm. game. Robin Hood, that was horrible. Yeah, he hasn't made a good movie in a very long time. Yeah, what was his last good one? Oh, well, I liked. Mm. Wow, why didn't you like that? See, nobody else knows what we're <laughs> talking about. But I don't know the what counselor. You're about. The counselor. Oh, I didn't see that one. Oh, I have it if you want. I don't want to see it. He's, um, he's, I've lost all. all he's all, lost credibility in, for me. Wow, but what about... Uh, what? Fuck you! <laughs> if, fuck that! Fuck you! <laughs> a truck driver in Thelma and Louise. Okay, well, that was Thelma and Louise. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Oh, man. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, speaking of comedies... You've got to um, be fucking kidding me. They have... My God, that's a good movie. Um, They have a... Uh, they have police academies on Netflix yeah, now. I was, I was thinking about day. watching it, but the I'm first like, one's good. The first yeah, one's yeah, funny. yeah. Remember, she was blowing him under the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's all you remember from that. You know what they said on Golden Girls that oh, I was amazed that they get away with this on NBC was, um, she was like, um, uh, Blanche was dressed as a cowgirl because mm-hmm. she was going to something with some boyfriend. She walks out and and. Uh, 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 Wow. 
It starts with a Golden B. Boy. What's her name? Do- Whoa. Uh, B. Arthur. Do- Dorothy. Dorothy. Dorothy goes. Dorothy goes. Oh, you're just like cowgirl. And she goes, Yeah, yippee ki K Y. Like yippee ki K Y. <laughs> and they go, I don't think that's how it's said. And she's like, Oh, that's how I say it. And Yeehaw. I'm like, Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, Wow, really? Like, oh, that's gross. Um, yeah. Um, but uh, but what we were saying before that, K Y, uh, got to be fucking kidding me. Um, oh, uh, police academy. Um, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I have to rewind in my head and figure yeah. out where I was when we were gonna say something. Um, oh, and you heard that uh, Sense Eight was yeah. canceled, so I haven't watched that yet. I was gonna I watch that. the second season yet. Yeah, but I'm, I also they've also said that they're gonna they're gonna wrap it up in 2018. Moment. Yeah. Um, and then uh, what else? I like Sense Eight, but it's it's uh, there's a lot of you can say a Joe Gaines. There's a too much. Too much. Gaines. Too much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know I'm not. You know, it's not for me. Right. That part of it isn't for me. Right. It just seems like an overabundance of it. Well, that first time when they did it in the first season, that was like okay. You're understanding that the they're first season connected. didn't seem as well. Okay, like I said, I haven't even watched the second the season. Second R- season, I watched that that right, two that hour movie. movie. Yeah. And yeah, there was some. Uh, there was another the, one in that. That was like a I big orgy like, scene. Yeah, just like there was that one in the first season. And the one in the first season, I thought, did it good. You understood, like it was they're fine. All yeah, they're kind of. Yeah, they're interconnected, even when they have sex. Yeah. So it it would uh, it would look to them as they were all having sex together. Yeah. So that's what it made it look but like then to when us. It, yeah, but then when it did it again, it was like, oh, it seemed come like on, really, you did that once. We yeah. don't need to see that every time. Yeah. But um, speaking of that, so there's this inappropriate older man at work <laughs> at the one of the hotels. He's a, He works at the front desk. Yeah. And so yesterday, um, I'm in there last night, and he goes, he goes, he goes, oh, yeah, I'm a member with, he goes, I'm a member of some page on Facebook. And he said, but it's closed. You can't come to it. But he said, but it, there's a photo of, like, a, he goes, it was a, a a gay pride parade, bunch of faggots, and he goes in there. <laughs> he goes in there marching. He goes, but there's these two guys. They're in the middle of all these other faggots, and he goes. This is him talking, not you, he right? Goes, right. And he goes, one guy's got his fist up the other guy's ass, and they're just right there, like he's fist, <laughs> he's fist fucking the guy right there in the middle of this whole group. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow. But I'm more like, wow, like we're in a hotel lobby. Yeah. Luckily, there's nobody around, but you're saying faggot. And the other day when I was like, you were in Vietnam, right? You started talking about like, you know, zipper heads. And <laughs> he didn't say that, but he was talking about like towel heads and like all yeah. kinds of just niggers. And it was like, whoa. Bunch like fig eaters trying to find reverse in a <laughs> Russian tank. <laughs> oh, what was that one I heard? Oh, shit. I forget. <laughs> um, but... Uh, yeah, so it was uh, it was ridiculous, but um, um, that's about it. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little. You much, haven't but it's watched a good show. You haven't been watching uh, anything. Uh, anything new? No. I mean, any whatever you're watching. I figured. The only thing that recently I've been watching is I've been catching up on Seinfeld. Me too. No, oh. on uh, Bob's Burgers. Oh yeah, which for some reason I thought was funny but then i just wouldn't keep up with it uh-huh. and then for some reason because tracy's been watching them in reruns on hulu uh-huh. and then i've been seeing a lot that i haven't seen before and they're really funny so i now i've seen them all up yeah to, i'm caught up on that but uh i started watching yesterday i started watching rick and morty have you ever watched that no i haven't it's really I, funny. I heard it's real good yeah it's so not a kid's started. cartoon it's yeah, for yeah. adults so I'll it's have pretty to check good that out and then uh, and that's on Hulu, right? Yeah. All of the seasons. The two, there's two seasons, and the third season's coming out soon. Okay. And then um, what was the other one? Um, oh, The Mick. I I missed a couple of episodes I while we were watching it, so I got to go back that. and watch those too. Um, and they were on Anna Ferris. Anna Ferris has a podcast called Unqualified, mm-hmm. and uh, she had Caitlin Olson and the other guy on from the mic, oh. she had them on there it was a pretty funny episode um pretty funny podcast yeah yeah yeah. and then hollywood babylon now is charging 10 bucks a month for you to watch the show really 
yeah for a video of it on a thing called uh youtube hollywood babylon video or something no it's some other place where you ten dollars a month yeah ten dollars a month or eighty dollars a year and it's like I've been to the show, and yeah, it's a little bit of the stuff is explained. Like when he does the imitations, like maybe it's funny to see it. No, he but doesn't. He doesn't look like the people but, he's right, impersonating. Right, right. But a lot of it is just like I can listen. Like Chip was like, "Why would they? Do, doesn't he make enough money? They both. I they, they get everything at the door or whatever. However that well, works. Yeah, those live so shows. They get, they yeah, sell they tickets. get all that. Yeah. So I don't know. And you know, they both have other jobs. Maybe they we're in the make money. Maybe we're in the wrong racket. I guess. Maybe you and I need to start charging for this. Do the videos. Well, I know they're not charging for the podcast. They're just charging right. for the video right. version. But then it. at one point, and I don't know if it's still the the case, but at one point, remember, Smodcast had, like, you can order our shows without commercial interruptions, Mm-mm. and it was $25 a month or what? $25 a year, something like that. And I'm like, I'd just rather just I do my... Just 30 Fast seconds skip. through it, yeah. So it's like, but yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, they got to make more money, I guess. I, don't, I just realized I didn't comb my hair when Joe came oh, over. I realized so that sorry. when you opened the door. Well, you should have told me. Why would I do that? Because it's funnier uh, this way. Oh, okay. Um, so, okay, I guess that's our show. I guess that is. Have you listened to Cashing In with DJ Miller yet? No, I haven't. I uh, wrote it down. Well. Does that count? No. Oh. Um. But uh, no, I will. I'll write it down again. Yeah, do that. I don't write it down right next to the last time you wrote it down. Oh, I will. Thank oh, here. It's right here in the trash. <laughs> I left it. <laughs> it is. No. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Trust me. I know. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Shut that fucking dog up. I'm kidding. That's rude. I know. Um, yeah, I can't, f- I can't find where I wrote it last time, Joe. See? Sorry. Anyway. Um, cashing in, T.J. Miller, Joe yeah. says to watch. It's very listen. funny. All of them are funny. Listen. Just listen to the first couple, and if you don't like it, then stop. Okay. But if you do like it, then it's best to start at the beginning. Well, and that's what's uh, scary to start new podcasts, like that unqualified. Like I do I do like I do with Mark Marin, where I pick and choose, or the Nerdists, like yeah. I watch certain ones. Well, they don't interview. They don't have guests. It's yeah. just them. Right, right. And it's mostly just improv so it's just them riffing back and forth. And yeah, like mine. They do. Hello, Joe. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're yeah. calling back. <laughs> we yeah. have your sons. Oh, my God. Your sons are in a oh. Bukaki scene. Uh. <laughs> Isn't Bukaki illegal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's gross. Um, no. So I'll make sure they listen to this one in particular. <laughs> yeah. So you go forward all the way to the end. Where, uh, <laughs> so you're going to come and pick up your sons? <laughs> <laughs> and Joe says, eh, fuck it. Nah. I've known him too long. Yeah, I've known him for long enough. Yeah. I don't see them getting any better. We couldn't get the one out. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't get the one out of the house. He won't leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he started freaking out and screaming. <laughs> Great. Uh, anyway. All right. Yeah, and then me and Tracy need to do a podcast uh, sometime. Yeah. Good luck with that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well. She's uh, a grown-ass woman. I know. She can do it if she wants. I know. Well, uh, that's uh, now Sean. Sean listened to our last show. He said it was very funny. Uh-huh. He liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I said, cool, thanks. And mm-hmm. then I said, listen to the anal sex one mm-hmm. because it's Sean calling in. And Sean at the p- time of the, the last podcast I put up, Sean at the time thought I was having him call in because he knew anal sex and Sergio didn't or, you know, so he was supposed to be the expert. The expert. And then I told him later, I go, no, Sergio's or done it before. Expert. I said, yeah, I said, Sergio's done it. Well, and then Sergio asked him, were you a giver or a taker? Like, which, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's a funny episode. Gotcha. The sound's a little off, but it's good. And then I found one where you what called in. What is the sound a little off? On those old ones? Uh, all the good ones are the ones that then the sound uh, go bad. daddy. The really well, no, funny ones is where the sounds. I had stopped up. paying go daddy, so then go daddy closed, and those had like well recorded sound. Yeah, no, it's well Despite recorded. No, you. they. J- I just lost those episodes because that was on a separate oh thing. My God. Anyway, you oh my God, I paid forty bucks for that <laughs> Block Talk Radio for forty dollars a month that I was doing that. Yeah, and then I was like, that's way too much yeah. money. Like I'll pay ten bucks on Podbean and do this. Yeah. So that's what I do. There you go. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, Show yeah. them. Yeah, I did. 
Okay, then. Joe says goodbye. Yeah, uh, say goodbye. Joe also says uh, check us out on Facebook under It's Kind of a Funny. Facebook.com, It's Kind of a Funny Podcast. Oh, he doesn't even know his own. And uh, Twitter, It's Kind of a Funny Pod. Because they won't let me write cast. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, Too long of a title. Your title is 40, 140 characters Oh, long. trust me. I've been thinking like we should change the title. Like you and I, you and me, it's been you and me, me and Sean. And me and Chip every once in a while. And so I'm like, we should just do you and I and change the name of the show to something else. And, you know, but then I'd have to change the name. And then everybody who is maybe going, the two people that are going to look, Mm -hmm. you know, but. Well, back. Hold on. Okay. What days off do you have? Oh, yeah, yeah. So Joe's going to tell me a secret. secret. Um, Oh, I have off um, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. Um, oh, now I'm supposed to ask. Hang on. No, I have. Hey, what day? <laughs> my days off are the same: uh-huh. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we right. don't have a same day off. Right. But oh. uh, starting the week of the 16th, mm-hmm. I will be. <laughs> That's uh, my wife blowing her nose. Oh. She's sick. She's uh, in the bathroom. But I thanks will. for laughing at her. I'll tell her. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start working nights. Okay. So oh, so you did get that, and you like yes. that better? That works out for you guys. Yeah, it will. Okay, but because you never see the wife, I get you. No, up top, Joe. <laughs> hey, Joe, oh my God! <laughs> so I'm just letting you know. We'll right. Figure it out. Right. Because I'm still off. Now I'll be off Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night oh, instead so of you Thursday, won't be off Friday, Wednesday Saturday. night. Right. Right. Hmm. Well, I usually don't go to work until later, like seven o'clock or whatever at night, but. Um, like all during the week. So we could either figure that out or I could go to you if you have to, you know. But well, then, yeah. But then either it'd that be... Or just like before, one of the one of my nights off, I can just come over. I'll be up anyway. Right. I just don't have to go to work. Right. But I can then... come over before you have to go to work. Oh, right. Like we oh, used yeah. to. Right, right, right. Yeah, I see. Okay, then. Yeah, that'll work too. Um, and then, yeah, because Sean... Sean was like, I want to do another podcast. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, <laughs> I got, I got a lot of work bid. Ber- uh, my, yeah. My <laughs> yeah. I got some I bid, get some shit chest. bids. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, that's why I felt bad about reading the work stuff, but hopefully that wasn't boring. Yeah, you're making but, him jealous. I know. That's my um, shtick. Yeah. How dare you? No, he's him and I've gotten better. Oh, if you want those fight club, I do two not want those. Books. You tried to pawn those on me Damn the last I had a feeling. couple times. Deadpool's not yours. That's I, mine. I, well, I, I wanted that. that. Um, but okay, well, if you want to take no, it, I'm I'll read it some I'm other kidding. time. Um, it's not that great. Um, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like uh, Transformers last night. It's okay. Yeah. Um, okay, then. All right. um, okay, everybody. Uh, please uh, send us comments or questions, which nobody does, to no. It's Kind of a Funny Podcast. Be the first. Yeah. Joe sent an email once about a drinking game. I still have that one saved, and that's about it. Yeah, but it's been used. You burned that yeah. one already. Um but anyway, um, so yeah, send any all that stuff to uh, it's kind of funny podcast at gmail dot com or at pduguyi at gmail dot com. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Can you really deep throw balloons? Do pregnant strippers make us swoon? What makes